Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I am Coach Dwight McDowell, and my wife is Coach Angela McDowell to my left. Might even be to your right. And so we are here uh, tonight uh, about to do one of our favorite things is uh, get a chance to talk about God's word, number one. But the lesson that we'll be talking about tonight is resolving conflict. Um, we're just going to give a few minutes to allow people to chime in. Uh, once you're on, if you would just give us a thumbs up or uh, type in the chat that you're on, I really would appreciate it. We will have some that won't be talking at all, so we understand that as well. But we just encourage you tonight to tell a friend as we'll be talking about resolving conflict. And I like to say resolving conflict in the family because we're going to be talking about the family. You're going to be talking about uh, in marriage and uh, with husband and wife. And so, but again, it's resolving conflict. And so um, we have some that are chiming in now. If y'all can hear us okay, if you would just kind of give us a thumbs up or type in the chat that you can hear us and then we will literally get started. Uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to go forward. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is our first class of the year, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first class back. Um, I'm sure you've had some uh, great teachers along the way. You've had the Garys, you've had the Hammonds. We want to give a special shout out to them. So uh, for those of you that are watching live with us now and those that will be watching uh, that might chime in later, uh, Happy New Year. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. And can we go ahead and open in prayer? Yeah, All right. So. so let's pray. Father. We just thank you tonight. Lord, I thank you for getting a chance to work with my beautiful wife and my beautiful queen. Lord, I ask that you will make the word easy to share, uh, make the lesson teachable and understandable, and make it really easy and understandable for the people that are listening now or looking in on now and those that will hear later tonight, those that will hear later tomorrow. Father, we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Amen. with that being said, um, this is my wife, Angela, again, and she will be leading us as we get started. And then uh, if you do have some questions or a comment, as long as they're positive, you're welcome to put it in the comment section and um, we will go from there. Um, see up there. And so you're welcome to share your comment uh, then or your question if you have one and we will get started from there. So, babe, you're on. Okay. Uh, all right. All right, so tonight we will be talking about resolving conflict. Um, hmm, which I can see everybody. Raise your hand if you've never had conflict. All right. And then they were crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so conflict, one thing about conflict is it's really inevitable. You're going to have it. The thing about conflict is that we have to learn how to uh, tell it what to do instead of it telling us what to do um, in our relationships. What family, mom and dads, siblings, um, husbands and wives, all of it. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about kind of how to resolve conflict. This is, you know, what we're talking about tonight in this next 40 minutes or so um, is a snippet because people have written books on about, about how to resolve conflict yeah. because it's that important. So uh, let's start. It's the, our key verse tonight is, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That's Romans 12 and 18. If it's possible, live peaceably with all men. And it says, as much as depends on you. And that's mankind. <laughs> yeah. So we have, we have uh, you know, we have a lot to do with uh, resolving the conflict. That's good. Uh, our key verses tonight are Proverbs 13, 10. Uh, Matthew 5, 23 and 24, Matthew 18, 15 through 17, if you're jotting these down, and also Matthew um, 18, 21 and 22. Ephesians as well, 4, 26 and 27, um, and also James 3, 14 through 16. So, uh, I'm going to just read the introduction to this to kind of get, get us ready to uh, all the aha moments that will come with uh, this lesson. Yeah. All right. So introduction. Peace is a top 
priority in the home. Let me say that again. Peace is a top priority in the home. Let me say this part. And one of the things that my wife always says is we got to have peace in here. She said, I can't take it if we ain't got peace in this house. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big things. And according to how she just read that, it says this priority. That means it's number one. That's it. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. If we got peace, we can work through the other things. But peace yep. has to be part of it. Peace has hey, to Sharon. Be hey, Pastor Ken. Glad y'all could join us. Um, and it says the ability to live together in harmony and the ability to resolve the inevitable conflicts that come as part of a of daily life are indispensable elements to a strong family. However, many families are far from the ideal of having their homes as a, as safe havens and places of refuge. Instead, instead, they are faced with constant conflict, escalated tension, and continual frustration <clears throat> over how to deal with the problems that arise in family life. Occasional tension and conflict are part of every home. After all, we have different people with different expectations, yeah. different backgrounds, um, occupying a limited physical space day in and day out and year after year. To think there will be, there will never be a problem just because we are Christians is naive at best. On the other hand, to think that constant arguing and fussing and fighting are normal is not accurate either. Yeah, and that's a term sometimes people use. That's just normal. That's just natural in our house. It's not. It should not be that confusion and arguing and discord. Mm -hmm. That is not. Remember that first part my wife started with tonight. Peace in the home is a priority. Mm -hmm. It's a must. And so, hey, Pastor Rodney, hey, Pastor Nancy, glad y'all could join us. The truth is that all families will experience some conflict, but it should not be a norm. And it should not, and it should be resolved as quickly as it possibly can. That's good. So in this lesson, we're going to kind of examine some of the causes of conflict in the home and how to deal with them. Um, you know, in this way, we can have homes that nourish and enrich our families and reflect God's love to the world. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. It's okay we get started? Yes, please do. Okay. All right. So number one, if you're following oh, along, sure. it says you can, you can. You can live in an argument and discord. Ooh, look at that phone. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going to resolve this conflict now, honey. You got to turn that down no, before you do that. I know, I'm you sorry. Do that pretty I tried. Often. Yeah. Do that pretty often. So I know, turn it down I was, first. I was trying to, but I was trying to make sure I'm in this so I can answer the chat. Too. I understand. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let's get right. some makeup. Let's resolve this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right. So, number one. It says you can live together with those in your family without destroying one another. Yes, you can you can live together, you can have conflict without it destroying your, your relationship. Yeah. So A, your feelings um are friend and foe. So it says, is your family friend or foe? When we think of the word family, we probably think of wonderful supportive relationships that help us raise our self-esteem give us opportunities to share that of course is the ideal but is that the reality in which most of us live mm. okay our family relationships can provide our greatest support or our deepest devastation amen you know i just want to side rule if you're mm -hmm. on here live now and um and you know that family is needs a boost um we're talking about resolving conflict tonight and we like to say resolving conflict in the family mm -hmm. and resolving conflict in your in your marriage all those things will be touched on at some point so i encourage you uh to just take a side row for a moment and share the link or copy the link and share it or start your own watch party so somebody else can watch mm -hmm. or just share with it and just tell them to tune in tonight not because we're on and we're some great teachers but because God's word is talking about resolving conflict. And we understand conflict is going to be there. Conflict has taken out of many families. Yeah, it has. It has broken up families that they don't ever, don't even come back together because of conflict. And so I encourage you to just um, segue and just uh, leave for a moment and just, or share and get somebody else to join you as you watch. So I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure that they knew okay. they could invite somebody. Okay. Um, it says, there is no pain like the pain of divorce, abuse, molestation, or countless other problems specific to, to each family. We should put a sign over our homes that reads as follows, family inside, proceed with caution. 
you know, and we don't want to put that kind of sign because it's like, oh, if I go in there, what's going to happen? If we have a sign on our over our door that says family inside, proceed with caution. What are they going to find when they get in there? Mm. Will they walk through the door and there's a piece that comes on them? Or will they walk through the door and all chaos has, has broken out? That's good. So you want to, you know, take the temperature of your family and, and you know, to resolve the conflict. We'll, we'll, I'm going to get into something we're already going to get into. So, okay, B, number B says, I love you. But I don't like you. <laughs> How I many times you, have we said like that? You. I love you, but I don't like you. You ever seen that one where they put an emphasis on that? Uh, the words say I gotta love you, but I, I ain't gotta I, like I ain't gotta like you. And you just add that whole part, the part about I don't like you, so it's an emphasis to dig at somebody. But I want to be in a place where I love you and I, I like you. you. Yeah. And I love you and, and I, I like you. you. I like you and I love you. That's where we want to be in the family. That we that, this is my family. This is who we got. Mm -hmm. That's and I'm talking about your natural family. And a lot of times we we forget the spiritual family. Um, if you're in a, a local church body somewhere, uh, understand the conflict is gonna come up sometimes. But if this is the, if that is the spiritual family God has given you, I love you, I like you, and we are gonna resolve this conflict. We're gonna get back to worshiping our God. We're gonna talk a little bit later about that. Where the Word of God says that, and in one part, it's better to uh, if you if you see when you got a fault with somebody or you got some uh, issues going on, go ahead and and apologize or go ahead and, and resolve the conflict before you ever go worship. Yeah. Watch. She's yeah. going to talk about it in a minute. Go ahead, babe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody that just joined us, thank you for joining us. I'm glad to have you here. I am Dwight. This is my wife, Angela. It's a pleasure. Um, Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming on. Um, So I love you, but I don't like you. It says, have you ever had the feeling that you have to love your family members, but you really don't like them? Do you ever wish you had other people in your family instead of the ones that you do have? But you see, the fact is, God gave you your specific family. This yeah. is part I love. Let's 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 hone in on this. God gave you your specific family. You didn't get to choose. Wait a minute. He gave me my specific natural family and my specific spiritual family too. Yes, especially your your natural family. <laughs> let's let's pinpoint. He gave you your spiritual family too, but he definitely gave you your natural family. Wow. You were born into that family. Wow. wow. Okay. So therefore. You must acknowledge that he works through the personalities and roles of those in your family. This, this is the key part, to break down your independence and to mold your character. Come what? on, come on. Wait, let me just holler at some more people. Hello, uh, Gina. Uh, hello, uh, Teresa. Teresa says, hello, family. I love you and I like you. And we love you and like you. <laughs> we love you and we like you, <laughs> um, cousin. So read that again so people can understand because I, I, that's gotta, okay. we gotta let that marinate for a minute. Everybody, just hear this for a second. Go ahead, man. Okay, God gave you your gave you your specific family. You didn't get to choose them. Therefore, you must acknowledge that He works through God works through uh, the personalities and the roles of those in your family to break down to break down your independence and to mold your character. Wow. Wait a minute. So I have to resolve this conflict with whoever's in my family because that strengthens the me. That's the, that takes off layers of stuff that God did not give yeah. me and makes me a better person for his kingdom. So he's he's molding us to be who he called us to be. But he uses our family yeah. relationships in order to do that. So even that family member that may just look like they say things to you just to get under your skin, it's molding you. Yeah. Is that um, how, I are you, a, how are you going to respond? Yeah. How are you going to react and respond? Are you going to react or are you going to respond? Right. That's what it is. I had, man, I had a, a spiritual family member when you said, mm -hmm. because the, and I remember, you'll probably remember this, probably 25 years ago. But every time this gentleman came by me, he would say something to get under my skin, it would pluck me so bad, mm -hmm. and I was just. And this was a, a brother of mine. I mean, this was a family mem mem member in my spiritual family that was so close to me. But every time he came by, he just do something just to pluck me. And I remember one day I said, Ugh! and my wife was standing there, and another, and one of the elders was standing there. Say, hey, what's wrong? I said, man, dude, just intentionally says or does something to pluck me, just to. And 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 he says, it's something God's trying to correcting you. Mm -hmm. It's something God's trying to mold in you. If it plucks you that bad and 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 that statement was so touch, touched me so deep at that time, but it gave me patience with people the next 25 years of my life. Um, 
And I try to have a, 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 a level of tolerance mm -hmm. for anybody, my spiritual family, my, my, my natural family. And I know I'm going to spiritual family because a lot because yeah. we're talking about the God is and we need to know this as as, as children of God that we're gonna have some conflicts in our family. Mm -hmm. But I'm just letting you know that one thing. But after my wife read that, that's shaping me, mm -hmm. is molding me, is the is making my character stronger to be able to walk through this life that I live in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the conflict that I have with you is not a about you, it's about but me. It's about me. It's about me. Oh gosh, why did that bother me? <laughs> Come so on. What is that in me that is that that rubs me the wrong way? You know how I, Lord, how do I respond to this? You know, and things. That well, how about this one? That if you, if what you just said is reality, that means well, I ain't talking to her no more. I ain't even gonna deal with. It. I'm going the other way. So you don't want to be molded into what God wants to complete in you. You don't trust. <laughs> you God. don't trust God. Don't trust God to do Come it. Come on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Ooh, we can talk about this. Yeah, all we right. can. Even though family relationships are the most uh, difficult relationships, they are also the most rewarding. Their intimate nature, intimate into me, see, like Pastor Nancy said a few weeks ago, their intimate mm -hmm. nature can inflict pain like no other relationship. Amen. But they can also bring joy uh, like nothing else. Okay. Um. Next, let's move into section two. Love this section. It gives us one, two, three. Okay, how do we do this? One, two, three. So there are three main sources. Oh, not the how to. The how to's coming late. There are three main sources of conflict in the family. So this comes out of James 3, 14 through 16. James 3, 14 through 16. Uh, so the first main source of conflict is hurt. Hurt, hurt, hurt people want to hurt other people mm. because they don't know how to respond to the hurt or bring it out and we can talk all night about that as well so hurt people cause conflict and a lot of times they hurt they want you to hurt as much as they do so you can understand how they feel but they don't have the words to say it so hurt causes conflict james says the wounded pride is the source of much contention only by pride cometh contention mm. Okay, Proverbs 13. 10. <clears throat> when a person feels rejected or belittled or overlooked, um, he may get angry. You know, meekness is the opposite of pride. Mm. If we are humble, whoo, well, mm. humble, humble, that's a big word. That's a huge word. <laughs> if we are humble, we don't get all we don't get all riled up because of wounded pride. So if you feel yourself getting all round up riled up and what's going on. Yeah then the, the humility meter needs to come up a little bit. Jealousy. You know what humility means? <laughs> you're humble, meaning you'll decrease. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and the God in you will come up, will come up higher. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll go, begin to come down so low. And it's pride that takes that thing out mm -hmm. where you, you let the conflict just go ahead and take over mm -hmm. and instead of just saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I, want, I want to fix this. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's better for me to stay mad. It's not. It's painful. Yeah. My wife is going to talk about that in just a moment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just want to say hey to a few people. Mm -hmm. uh, the script is up there. James 3, 14 and 16 and my, through 16. And my wife's talking about, hey, Rachel, how are you? Uh, anybody else that we may have missed? Y'all welcome to comment. Who's that? Gina. Gina. Um, those that are on, thank you for joining. You're still welcome to add, uh, go and tell a friend and bring them on tonight. We're talking about resolving conflict, resolving conflict in the family, resolving conflict in the marriage. Mm -hmm. All right. Jealousy. Pride and hurt are the source of most conflicts. Saul's hatred, you can speak on this a Come lot. On. He's talking about David. Saul's hatred and anger at David in the Old Testament, for example, caused Saul to change from loving David. He loved David as a loyal comrade to hating him so much that he tried numerous times, ran after him, sent people after him to kill him. Listen, we're still, that thing is still not said what, what Saul was ever, could ever pinpoint why he was so mad with David. This, this enemy would just take over, make him sick, mad with somebody. And, and David was literally always trying to rescue mm -hmm. Saul, mm -hmm. trying to do his bidding, trying to fight for him. But something just kept rising up because what when I say that, something, that pride that my wife is talking about would not let him humble himself mm -hmm. enough to say, this is not, I will not be Man, I will not cause right. continue to allow conflict to take me and my my dear friend. In fact, David humbled himself before Saul like a son. 
He's like, it, he would he would leave the area. He says, before I bring harm to him, I'll mm-hmm. kill myself. I'll just get out of here because I don't want to. I don't want to cause the conflict to get worse and worse. I'll just go. Most of those times, Saul Didn't was. He had time. He had chance. To oh, he could have at least three times. <laughs> I remember me and Pastor Kim was having a good conversation one time, and and we found that talking about two times, which is the third time that David had to be able to kill Saul. And but he says, no, I, I'm not going to allow this conflict to come between us in such a way. It's going to be resolved or I will die before I touch God's anointing in any way. And so we got to get to a place that and so David was it was not painful for him. He kept running away. So it wouldn't even be a pain. It was painful to Saul to not because his pride, pride gets in the way. But we're in a place tonight that we're talking about that once you detect that thing, humble yourself in such a way and say, look, I'm not I don't want to get into this. conflict. I don't want conflict to keep coming up. I, I want to resolve this so that I can worship God almighty, you know, so that I can get in a place that God can bless me. Amen. Amen. Love when you talk about David. Thank you, babe. I do. Too. I like David too. <laughs> okay. All right. So again, the three the, there are three main sources of conflict in the family. So we just covered hurt. Okay, and we can talk a lot about that. The next one is fear. Fear also leads to conflict in relationships. People will react abnormally because of fear. Events that occur in the past are remembered and projected larger than life on the wall of our mind. Our the wall of our mind is almost like graffiti. You, we all, we're all we always keeping things on there that yeah. need to be washed off and yeah. scrubbed off. Uh, Let me they, say this. When you said about the wall of our mind, mm-hmm. and we don't want you to think that we're just talking to the people that may not know the Lord. Or people. My wife has to catch me something. She'll watch me and she'll say, Stop thinking like that. She calls it stinking thinking. That <laughs> so I'll be, I'll give my, I'll make myself the worst guy in my brain that I didn't get this done today. And she'll, no. Mm-hmm. Stop and the enemy and what you're talking to the enemy or letting the enemy talk to you and you have to so I just want you to know it happens to the saints of God it happens mm-hmm. to non-believe all mm-hmm. those things but the, but it's not it's not a part of you it, it has to go right now Amen Amen Okay so we keep things on the walls of our mind from past experiences Now it says when we see things moving in that direction and remember we're still connecting to our past experiences so when we see things moving in that direction. We react in fear because we don't want that to happen again. So we react or re- respond or, or shouldn't say respond because when you respond, it's supposed to be yeah, the right yeah, way. Yeah. But we react out of fear, even though the current situation may not be anything like what we experienced in the, in the past. But we see like a little inkling of something that may remind us of something that happened in the past. And we jump out of it and fear and jump at it. And it's, 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 it's. Oof. Yeah, it's it's another way to do that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get that soaking water yeah. and get that graffiti off of the yeah. uh, off of the, the walls of our mind. And like I you said, some turpentine to wash that stuff yeah, out. Yeah, and we're touching this, and we can go into further than this. But let me keep going. Very often in a marriage, for example, we fail to realize that uh, the very we fail to realize the very real fears that our partners are struggling with and therefore do not understand their unusual reactions of anger and fear. I often say, and it's harder, it's easier to say than do, but it's, it is a thing. Uh, we often say, try your best. If there's a conflict going on, something going on, try to look past the words and look into the heart because in there, there's fear, there's rejection, there's something in there you as a as a wife or a husband can pull your spouse out of that and respond to the fear that's good and the rejection and not the person or the words that's good so it's same way with your family members there's some things yeah some people in your family you can pull them out of that stuff instead of going to that yeah don't go with them. them don't go with them in there get them out of there yeah I was telling somebody a story today about how eagles um that have been through the molting process they mm-hmm. go to the highest mountain and then the eagles that are going through the molting process the molting process is when they're in a valley they're pulling the feathers out their bodies mm-hmm. because they have to go through this process but the eagles that have been through it they're encouraging them that's what that what you're talking about when you say pull them out get them out of that but encourage them give them something good to walk on mm-hmm. um those that have just joined us uh um Alex and hello Alex hello um I saw uh, I saw uh, Jenny Alvarez up there. Greetings. We're talking about resolving conflict tonight, whether it be resolving conflict in the marriage, whether it be resolving conflict in the family. And so um, if you have any, if you have a comment or a question, put it in there. We'll try our best to answer it. But just want to greet you on that resolving conflict. I'm Dwight. This is my wife, Angela. <laughs> OK, so the third main source Now we already covered hurt. We covered fear. And the third main source of conflict 
It's frustration. Ooh. Man. Frustration, frustration leads to conflict. Leads to conflict. Yeah. And I'm going to read what it says, but frustration mainly is we expect something that didn't happen. Okay. That's what frustration is. So every person has certain things that are important to him or her. All right. Let's say for, to the husband, it may be being on time. All right. To the wife, it may be, you know, looking just right. And that scenario. It's good. When we are frustrated, we are like a pot about to boil over. Mm. You know, so let's see in a family, they listed these things. Phones, all this happened at the same time. Phones ringing, kids crying, dogs barking, meals burning, the cars are breaking down, computers glitching, the checks are bouncing, milk spilling, stocks are dropping, you're losing some money. Come on. Doors banging, uh, and the toilets overflowing are all a prescription for frustration. <laughs> and the list can go on and on. Ooh. Come so, on, I know none of y'all have never been frustrated in the in the family. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I've never been frustrated. Mm -hmm. No, smack my hand for lying. <laughs> yeah, frustration. They say frustration leads to conflict. When you get frustrated about whatever's going on in the home, whatever's going on at work, it can lead to conflict. Mm -hmm. It can lead to destruction. It mm -hmm. can lead to taking your family in a place that you really don't want it to go. Because remember, we started this conversation with mm -hmm. talking about peace. Make peace. The word of God says make peace a priority in your home. And yeah. so we got to get to that place. That's make right. peace a priority in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Make peace a priority in your family. Make peace mm -hmm. a priority in your in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm frustrated because you didn't you put that bowl in the sink, and you know I just washed all the dishes. So now, why did you put this bowl in the sink? And you frustrated. I wasn't even down here when you washed the dishes. Didn't even know. I thought I was supposed to be sitting it there. And so mm -hmm. now that I got this, I'm sorry, babe. I'm just gonna wash. I'm gonna go put this in the dishwasher now. Yeah. All right. Yep. And it's <laughs> a way to respond. It is a way to respond. Or oh, I can sit there because she said that and start talking. About, so what you want me to do? I just I help. I washed this the other day. Just keep, and just keep going back. Let frustration stop peace in our home. No. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to humble themselves. And say, this is not going to take place. Right. Listen, I'm sorry that I put this bowl. I didn't realize we had just cleaned the sink out. I'll go ahead and wash it out now. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. So listen to this. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. um, hurt, fear, and frustration are like three primary colors that compose all other colors. You get that? So it's like you have these three colors. But you can pull out different colors out of those three primary colors. So hurt, fear, and frustration are like those three primary colors that compose all other colors. So there, there are countless combinations of the three things we just talked about. <clears throat> but everything boils down to one of these three, three things as the root of every conflict. Wow. So it may look different and the colors may change or you like I said, there's so many different scenarios that could happen to, but where's the root? What's going on in there? Is it fear? Is it jealousy? Is it pride? Is it hurt? Yeah. Um, you're frustrated. So why are you frustrated? What is it? How did, how did that even get there? So it's so many things that r run the gamut. This is boy, this boy, is good we, stuff. This is good stuff. I don't and, know y'all think. And if you look at those stuff, three things, when when you hey Massies, when yeah, when when you <laughs> hey y'all, when you see those things coming up, if you can just detect them for a moment, like Mark said, is this hurt? Wait a minute, I gotta go. I need to go another way. Mm -hmm. Is this is this fear? Am I afraid of something that's about to take place that I don't want? Mm -hmm. This is where you gotta pull back. Is this frustrating? Am I getting frustrated over the too many dishes in the sink or the laundry hadn't been done or right. somebody didn't pick the kids up for more time? If those things are one of those things, it just said those are the three main causes to conflict in your home. Yep. They got to go. And another one I would say is misunderstanding. Ugh. Misunderstanding. I, oh, I thought you meant. No, say what you mean. So I understand it. That's and if you don't understand, it, okay. if you don't ask thing. me, what did I mean? Yeah. So that because it, it, we we got right. like that to a place that we've had to learn over our thirty two years of marriage. We got to a place we like. Wait a minute. So that I, so that I understand correctly, so that I don't <laughs> misunderstand. Please tell me what you were saying. <laughs> what, explain it to me one more time. And we used to honestly, we used to get mad. Then I just say that three times. Well, listen. Could you say it to me a four times so I can make sure I understand <laughs> so that we can try to get rid of this conflict, yes. you know? And um, I just want to say that um, this class, some of y'all may have joined in not too long ago, but we're talking about resolving conflict in the family, resolving conflict in your marriage, uh, making peace priority in your home. Uh, we want to give honor to um, the teachers that were teaching before us. Each week, somebody teaches this class mm -hmm. that... Uh, 
Uh, Pastor Rodney and Aretha Hammond teaches this class, and, um, our, and our and our lead pastors, Pastor Ken and Nancy Gary, teaches one of these class. We have different sections of this book that we're going through, mm -hmm. and next week is forgiveness. Yeah, next week is forgiveness, so you should come back. Um, it'll be a different teacher on here, and I'm telling you, they're they're way better than us at this. But we we're we're teaching this class through New Life Christian Center, uh, in. Uh, East Ocean View section of Norfolk. So just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to our pastors and elders for just uh, entrusting such a class when it comes to resolving conflict with uh, to us uh, and trusting us to do it. Amen. <laughs> All right. So the third section we're going to run into, we're almost finished, y'all. There are three, there's that number again, three. There are three main ways people respond to conflict. So my husband was talking about kind of pinpointing is that fear I'm feeling? Is that hurt? Is that frustration? Sometimes we don't know. It's so hard for us as humans to put a name to our feelings. Mm. So what do, what do we do? What works for me is I ask the Lord, Lord, why, why is that bothering me? What is that? What is that? And he always answers. I'm he glad you asked him that because because you could go with this one. You know what's bothering me. You know why I'm frustrated. I don't. Know I, don't. I, don't yes, I don't even know why. Why do you expect me to know? Yeah. <laughs> why do I expect you to know what I don't even know what's why it's eating yeah. me up so bad. Exactly. So, so I asked the Lord. So she asked you know. the Lord. That's what I had learned to do. I'm saying, Lord, help oh, me what understand. Is what is that? Okay, so there are three main ways people respond to three main ways people respond to conflict, and it's out of Ephesians four, twenty six through twenty seven. You want to write that in the chat? Sure. Ephesians 4, 26. You can just abbreviate if you want to. I got it, baby. Uh, I'm trying to help you out, sir. I got it, ma'am. <laughs> All right. So there are three main ways people respond to conflict. The first way is explosion. Okay? Explosion is one reaction <clears throat> to conflict, and it's not a good one. That is not helping anybody. Okay? So... uh. Just as there are three basic sources of conflict that we just went over, there are three basic responses to conflict. The first is to explode, to be instantly inflamed with passion and to let it out the moment we feel it. The Bible says to be slow to wrath, James 1 and 19, meaning that we should be slow to express our anger even when it's justified. Thank you. Even when it's justified. The second thing it, say, it says here is Thomas Jefferson said, if you are angry, count to 10. If you're really angry, count to 100. <laughs> you know why? Because if you count to 10 and you stay mad, then then 10 wasn't count. enough. You keep counting. You get to 100, you ain't going to be mad when you're going to be tired. <laughs> Or you gonna, or you gonna be, if you get like me, you gotta start over. I just forgot what it was. Anyway, so we're gonna be spending a whole bunch of time counting. By the time you figure out how to get to 100, uh, you already forgot what you was upset about. <laughs> Amen. It says explosive anger is destructive. Say it with me. Explosive, explosive anger, anger is destructive. destructive. I'm gonna help y'all. What that, that means is those of y'all that get mad, you you slam the door and then you knock down two pictures and then guess who got to pay for that? Or you go and punch the wall. Guess who got to pay for that stuff after you done? Or you yelling at everybody in the house and then you all you got to do is you, you killing all the spirits in the house, making everybody feel this big. And then the, and the truth of the matter is now once you calm down, you got to go back in there and apologize or make up five reasons why it was really them that made you mad. It was it was you that just re overreacted. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. and the problem with that the explosive uh, reaction. If it works one time, it becomes a pattern that conditions a person to believe that the only way to win in a situation is to release explosive anger, but anger destroys and never builds up. Okay. Y'all hear? I want y'all to know my wife has a master's degree in counseling. Y'all hear the counselor come out? She moves her hand a certain way when she starts teaching. I'm trying to the hold it in. Came out. <laughs> I'm trying to, but it's true. It's true. So stop exploding. <laughs> Count to 100. Go pray. Yeah. Speak in tongues. All that stuff. All right. Um, the next one out of the three main ways that people can uh, kind of respond is implosion. I M P L O S I O N. Implosion is is the opposite reaction to explosion. So this response to conflict buries everything and pretends it's not there. You're keeping it in, or you you're you're sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. And after my husband has a saying, after the, after a while, that rug has a big lump in it because yep. we, we've we never been able to communicate what was there under there. So the person may manage to keep it subdued for a while, but the conflict is still there. Yeah. You keep saying, well, I'm like, all right, I'm good, I'm good. And the mountain, the little mountain of dirt that you keep pushing on it just keeps getting mm -hmm. bigger and bigger. Yep. It's just, it's just lying dormant. Before long, somebody walks by and stumble right over that, that knot. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, so it's uh, this is one thing I love. It says bur bury toxic waste, all the stuff that you keep it inside, and our lives will eventually surface in an unhealthy fashion. Someone said the anger I refuse to admit my stomach is keeping track of. Mm. Our physical health can be greatly affected by repressed conflict because it turns into bitterness. It can turn into depression and other psychological problems. One thing about our bodies and our minds, it keeps track of things. So in our heads, we was like, okay, I'm going to forget that. All right, I'm okay. Like my husband said, I'm all right, I'm all right. But your body is still feeling that yeah. tension somewhere. Yeah, sure it's is. hiding in somewhere in your body. It's tension in your shoulders or in your legs. Getting a headache. Your and, stomach. You know, yeah. and you don't realize that it's happening. Because you why. can't Cause separate you... the body from the mind. Yeah. So it's, it's going to feel it. So uh, God wants us to be whole from our head all the way down to our toes. And us learning how to resolve conflict, he's the best teacher. He is the best teacher because he knows us and he knows the people in our family um, that he gave us. That's good. All right. Um, and the last one of the three responses is resolution. Mm. Um, you know, confrontation or resolution is the best way to deal with conflicts. And some people say confrontation. I don't want to, I don't. But confrontation, you're just confronting the problem. Yeah. Confrontation does not have to be bad. Nope. So confrontation or resolution is the best way to deal with conflict. The word says in Ephesians 4.26, let not the sun go down on your wrath, means to deal with issues before the day is over. Mm -hmm. uh, couples who have this commitment seldom develop long-standing simmering problems that burst forth years down the line. So you want to just snatch that thing while it's fresh, you know, don't try not to let the sun go down on your wrath. But however, this is our tidbit. Don't start trying to resolve the conflict at 10 o'clock at night. It's not going to work. Yeah. Just, it's just not going to work. We tell married couples that all the time. All the time. <laughs> if you're trying to, y'all going to get there and wait till you get laid, laying down in the bed at night, 10 o'clock and start mm -hmm. talking about some two things that you didn't like about something early in the day, just let it go. Cause it won't, it will not get resolved that night. It can turn into a 3 a.m. fight that yes. you don't even want. So just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, you can say, honey, good night. We'll talk about some things tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you don't have wrath with you in the bed. That's right. But, you, you know, you bring it back up tomorrow. That's good. Always seek to understand. This is what we said before to, in, in this lesson tonight. Always seek to understand the hurt, the fear, or the frustration, frustration. your partner is experiencing, and then quickly move forward to resolution. Or your family member. Or your family person. member, Yeah that is experiencing and try to move forward to resolution. Again, try to look past the anger and the words, if you possibly can, to see that hurt and that fear. What's what's going on in there? That's good. Um, all right. Y'all good? Everybody good out there? Give, Give us, us a, a thumbs, thumbs up. up or <laughs> put something in the chat box and say that you, we're, you're we're, still with us. We're coming into our <laughs> landing. We're into a landing now. We're coming into our landing. Our last set of three things. All right. Um, all right, there are three. Is it okay if I keep going? Yeah. Okay. There are three phases of resolution to conflict. Uh, this comes out of Matthew 5, 21 through 23. Matthew 5, 21 and 23. This is what Hey, Tim, thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So three phases of resolution to conflict. All right. The first thing is recall it. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, bring it back to the front. What took place? <laughs> okay. So it says memories and I laugh. I'm tell you why in a minute. Memories store, memories store every fear, hurt and frustration. You may or may, may not have dealt with the, the conflict, but it's still, still there. Uh, reflecting your mind on the part you may have played in an angry exchange with your spouse, with your child, with your sister, with your brother, whatever. Put a mirror, put up a mirror and see the part you are responsible for. What we often say is, what is the percentage of this conflict? Yeah. Was, you know, it cannot be that person is 100% wrong. It cannot yeah. be. You had at least 5%. Yeah. And in my wife's kid, when my wife said, we have a conflict or whatever, she'll say, I was, babe, I'm not, I can say, I'm, I can't be all of it wrong. She said, all right, well, you 90% and I'm 10. <laughs> 
So, but even then, your 10% doesn't make it any better. It's just yeah. that you were still, you, caught, had some part you had some part in that thing. Mm -hmm. you Thank you, Pastor part. Rodney. Thank you, Rachel, for letting us know that you can steal hairs and y'all still with us. We're bringing it home. Yeah. So you had some, you had some part in it. So put a mirror to it. Where, where was my part, my part in there? Um, uh, and then when we say recall it, recall it factually. Don't recall it something that you added to it. Yeah, what you made up or what you yeah. what you wanted to so it sound good to yourself. Yeah. What's the facts that we can agree on how I recall it? So if you think about it, you can usually recall the words the other person was trying to say before you or or the other person got angry. Yeah. This will give you insight into the real cause of the conflict and show you what is uh, primarily at the root. All right, so we got recall, recall it. The next one is to resolve it. I got to resolve it too? Yeah. Absolutely. Unresolved conflict will block your ability to worship. Come on, listen. Somebody got to get this. While you're sitting there trying to hold this conflict at bay, just trying to keep it there, even if you're trying to hold it for three more days, to weaken, keep, another person, to keep another person in contempt. Just trying to find a way to be mad. What, the, what my wife is about to read to you in the scripture, it says, will block your ability to worship. Mm -hmm. Listen, if anything stops you from worshiping God Almighty, if anything blocks you from the, the throne room of, of heaven, if anything can hinder your blessings from getting through when it pertains to conflict, mm -hmm. it's got to go. Mm -hmm. It's got to go. So I'm sorry, babe. Go ahead and read. No, I just... Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Jesus said that resolving conflict is more important than worship. And what he used was offering. So if you're coming and you're laying down the offering and you have art with your brother, some you know someone is offended, go ahead and leave it there, but go and fix it. Yep. Go and resolve it. Um, the word, this says the word danger, D-A-N-G-E-R, is the word anger with the D in front of it. Mm. The word danger is the word anger with the D in front of it. Wow. To approach a person about an unresolved conflict may be scary, um, dangerous thought, you know, maybe dangerous thought to, to you, but it's worth it. You know, your spouse, your child, your boss, your neighbor needs to be free from the bind they are in because of a strained relationship with you. And that's a good one. I'm glad I said neighbor. Um, Cause we've had to do things, you know, just to fix the conflict with our neighbors. Like, no, we didn't mean to yeah. park in front of your uh, tail was in front of your driveway right. or we whatever. No, yeah. you know, apologize and keep it moving. You keep the conflict up, down in a way. Keep it down. Do it. Yep. <clears throat> Let's do it. Matthew 18 and 15 tells us to go, uh, to our brother alone. If that does not work, then follow a process of restoration, verse 16 and 17. In the family, this means approach your mate first when there is a conflict. If the two of you truly come to an impasse, seek outside help from your pastor or qualified uh, counselor or coach, a uh, Christian counselor or coach, do whatever it takes to resolve the conflict. So you can worship. <laughs> so, so you can get back and worship. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, I'll say, okay, so the third and last one of the ways that people can respond to conflict is to forgive it. Forgive it. So we got, um, so we got recall it, resolve it, forgive it. I'm sorry. I accept your apology. Mm -hmm. That's it. Most people, a lot of people have problems with apologizing. Some people have problems with forgiving. Some people have even problems with accepting the apology. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Yep. Let's resolve this thing so we can get peace back in the home as a priority in our family. And then we can worship. Then we can mm. worship. Okay. So Matthew 18, 21 through 22 states uh, the limit of our forgiveness, 70 times seven. Mm. And that's for each person. Somebody do the math and put that in the chat for me. <laughs> when you want to know how many times to forgive, 70 times 70 seven. times seven. And that's for each person. It says, we all need forgiveness for wrongs we have done. And likewise, we must forgive those who have hurt us. <clears throat> God is, was willing to forgive our sins, um, was and is, and remember them no more. And so too must we. Okay. The goal of every family should be to recall it, resolve it, 
and then truly forgive anger, wrath, and all other forms of conflict. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Somebody 70 said, times seven. You want to know how many times you're supposed to forgive? 490 times. Per person. Per person. <laughs> I don't even want to, I don't even want to have to apologize that many times somebody <laughs> to forgive me that much. Thank you so much. I've I've never I've always read it, but I've never sat down and did the math. Thank you for who shared it. 490, 90, 490 times. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, so that means we got we got to keep doing it. Yeah, know? we got to press forward so yes. we can worship. So we can worship. As we close, I want to say, summarize some of the mm -hmm. things that we talked about. It says tensions and problems will always arise within the family structure, but we can learn how to deal effectively with them and prevent them from eroding uh, the trust and intimacy within our families. Okay, as we begin understanding how hurt fear and frustration are at the root of many conflicts, we can begin seeing our conflicts in an entirely new light. So instead, oh, he's fussing or she's fussing. No, she's scared. She's scared. You know, what is that? Uh, as Nancy said, Kim <laughs> said, yeah, I thank you to Tim Flores for doing the math. 490 times. Per My wife said per person. <laughs> Pastor Kim said per person, per offense. And Pastor Nancy Gary said, is that 490 times per day? It could be. <laughs> it could be. Put on your forgiveness Put hat. Put on your forgiveness hat. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And the truth of the matter is we don't want it to ever get that high. Mm -hmm. Let's forgive and let's move on. Let's, yeah. let's get back to where it's not blocking our ability to worship. Amen. When we know why a person is upset, we know better how to deal with him or her and how to resolve the problem. It is possible to have a family that lives in peace and harmony. However, we will have to make a commitment to deal with conflict in a godly fashion when it arises. It may not always be easy and it may even be painful and scary, but facing our, facing our areas of conflict head on and working through them will reward us with the kind of family we've always wanted. Yeah, which will, if we, if, just like I said, it may not always be easy, but if we'll make this, this is a, a phrase the Lord my will wife. Help you. The Lord will help will. you. This is a phrase my wife already coined. It says, if we look at this, we talk, we tell married couples, it's not hard work, it's heart work. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the family. It's not hard work, it's heart work. Mm -hmm. H-E-A-R-T. What's going to go in here? What's going to, what, what are you going to allow to sit in there and, and cause pain? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to let it work to the heart and say, this has got to go because I want to worship. Amen. The final <clears> word, <throat> the Holy Spirit will guide us and our family relationships will move to a higher level as we learn how to resolve our conflicts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can rely on him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We Whew, that have was come awesome. to the end of this lesson. Have come to the end of the Isn't lesson. Isn't my wife a great teacher? <laughs> She's pretty too. You're beautiful. <laughs> so you, um, I'm just uh, just thankful that all y'all that joined us tonight um, and for those of you will come on later. I um, just want to let you know we were talking about resolving conflict. Mm -hmm. um, we coined it. We said resolving conflict in the family, resolving mm -hmm. conflict in the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, this is a powerful lesson, not because we taught it, but because this is something God put together and ordained for it to be here. And if you were on here tonight, mm -hmm. you were ordained to be here at this very time, this very, this very appointed time in life. Right. And so we're at, and we're letting you know that the class will be taught again, a different section of this um, lesson, and it will be taught by either uh, Pastor Ken and Nancy Gary from New Life Christian Center or either Pastor Rodney and Aretha Hammonds next mm -hmm. week. So join in. On forgiveness. Un, uh, on, what is on it? forgiveness. On forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling with that or if you got it down pat, you should be on that mm -hmm. lesson. Have your pen and paper ready. Put some uh, comments as you go. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to pray. That, is that okay mm -hmm. if I pray? Mm -hmm. um, just put some comments in there that you were here tonight. Um, um, thank you, Pastor Nancy G. Um, it says excellent and wow. So let's, uh, uh, if you're near any member of your family now, I challenge you to grab their hand or put your hand on their shoulder and just let's just humble our hearts and bow our hearts before the Lord. Father, we exalt you tonight. Yes, Lord God, we honor you and we thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. For such a powerful lesson. Thank you. We Lord. thank you for, uh, Lord, the. Uh, we're honored that we could even teach the lesson, but we're more honored that you would uh, help us to work even better on resolving conflicts in the marriage and in the family. 
Thank you. Father, Lord, we thank you for showing us how peace, that we need to make peace a priority in the home. Yes. Father, I ask that peace reign throughout these airwaves tonight. Yes, I ask that peace reign throughout these airways later on tomorrow when people are watching or next week. Yes, Father, we thank you for everyone that joined us tonight and everyone that will come uh, after this and, and watch later. Yes, Father, we bless you for showing us how to resolve conflict. Thank you. We honor you and we bless you in the name of Almighty Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all have Amen. an awesome night. I am Dwight McDowell. This is my wife, Angela McDowell, and we are Amen. out. Good night, everybody. Thank you again. Get ready to post it there.